He is to this day one of the greatest kings this world has seen. He is widely considered as one of history's most successful military commanders and his tactics are still being learned by generals in this modern age. Here are a few facts you didn't know about Alexander III of Macedon. Although the exact date is disputed, it is assumed that Alexander was born on the 20th of July 356 BC in Pella, the capital of the Kingdom of Macedon. His father was King Philip II of Macedon and his mother was Olympias, the daughter of the King of Epirus, Neoptolemus I. When Alexander was 10 years old, a trader from Thessaly offered to sell Philip a horse. The horse refused to be mounted and Philip declined the trader's offer. Alexander, however, asked to tame the horse himself, which he eventually managed to do. Philip was overjoyed at his display of courage, stating that a kingdom like Macedon is too small for Alexander's ambitions. Philip bought the horse from the trader and Alexander named him Bucephalus, meaning ox head. This was the horse which Alexander would be riding all the way to India. When Alexander was 13, Philip hired Aristotle, one of history's greatest philosophers to educate the young prince. Aristotle educated his students in Mieza, a small village near Nosa. Mieza was like a school for children of various Macedonian nobles. Many of Alexander's companions in Mieza would go on to become his closest friends and generals most notably Ptolemy, Hephaestion, and Cassander. Aristotle taught the children about medicine, philosophy, morals, logic, religion, and art. Alexander would develop a passion for the works of Homer, particularly the Iliad, a copy of which Alexander would later carry on in his campaigns. In summer of 336 BC, Philip II was assassinated by the captain of his bodyguards Pausinius, while attending the wedding of his daughter Cleopatra to King Alexander I of Epirus. As Pausinius tried to escape, he tripped over a vine and was killed by his pursuers. Alexander was proclaimed king on the spot by Macedonian nobles and the army at the age of 20. It is unknown why Philip II was assassinated though. Theories say that Pausinius and Philip had an affair which didn't end so well while some other theories put the mother of Alexander as the perpetrator of the murder. After consolidating his power, Alexander started to prepare his kingdom for the war against Persia. His first set out was to secure his northern borders as the people in Thrace were in revolt against the Macedonian. After defeating the last of the Thracians, new rebellions came but this time it was the Greeks that rebelled. Nevertheless, Alexander crushed the Greek city-states of Athens and Thebes and he could finally set his gaze towards the ultimate ambition of his life, the conquest of the Persian Empire. Alexander crossed the Hellespont in 334 BC with approximately 48,000 soldiers, 6,000 cavalry and a fleet of 120 ships. When he set his foot on Asian soil, he threw his spear into the ground and said that he accepted Asia as a gift from the gods. The Persians tried to defeat Alexander at the Battle of Granicus, but Alexander was a much more superior commander and tactician than his Persian enemies. After the battle, which was a clear Macedonian victory, Alexander accepted the surrender of the Persian provincial capital of Sardis and this would give him the control of the whole Asia Minor for the time being. When he traveled through Asia Minor, Alexander came upon the city of Gordium, where he undid the unsolvable Gordian knot, an achievement set to await the future king of Asia. He proclaimed that it did not matter how the knot was undone and hacked it apart with his sword. In spring 333 BC, Alexander marched his forces into Syria and the Persian king Darius III was waiting for him. What ensued was the Battle of Issus where once again Alexander defeated the Persian forces. Darius even offered a peace treaty to Alexander with proposed territorial divisions, but Alexander denied the treaty, saying that since he was the king of Asia, he would be the one who would decide the territorial split by conquering the rest of the Persian Empire. In the following year, Alexander was forced to attack the city of Tyre, which he would eventually capture. 
The residents of the city were massacred though, with all men of military age being executed and the women and children sold into slavery. When Alexander destroyed the city of Tyre, many cities in Egypt capitulated on the spot. He only met resistance at the city of Gaza and after the city fell he once again did what he did with Tyre. During his stay in Egypt, he was hailed as a liberator and was proclaimed as Pharaoh of Egypt. He also founded the city of Alexandria, which would later become the capital of the Ptolemaic kingdom after his death. Having left Egypt in 331 BC, Alexander marched eastward into Mesopotamia where he defeated Darius at the famous Battle of Gogomila, which would be the decisive encounter between the two and Alexander captured the city of Babylon while Darius fled. Alexander pursued Darius but the Persian king was betrayed and taken captive by his own subject, the Bactrian satrap Bessus. Bessus would go on to proclaim himself as the king of Persia but this would not last long as he was defeated shortly afterwards and executed by Alexander. After the conquest of Persia, Alexander was the target of numerous assassination plots, most notably by his general Philotas, who was executed for allegedly conspiring against him. Alexander would also assassinate Philotas' father Permenian so that he could not avenge his son. After his marriage to Roxana, Alexander formed a new ambition, which was the conquest of India. He crossed the Indus and took part in the Battle of the Hydaspes River, which was a hard-earned victory for the Macedonians. The defeated Indian King Porus has impressed Alexander in battle so much that he made him his ally and appointed him as satrap of Punjab. There he founded a city which he would name Bucephala in honor of his horse who died around that time. After the victory against King Porus, Alexander's army refused to march further east. These were the men that embarked on this journey with Alexander 10 years ago and did not see their families nor Greece since their departure and after experiencing battles against war elephants in India, the morale of Alexander's army was at an all-time minimum. He tried to persuade his soldiers to march further, but the men wanted to see their parents, families and their homeland so badly that they opposed Alexander, even violently. Alexander eventually agreed and returned back towards Babylon, where he would live out the rest of his days. Alexander died on either the 10th or 11th of June 323 BC after 12 days of illness, in the palace of Nabuchodonosor II in Babylon at the age of 32. His death is surrounded in mystery, as many historians claim that it wasn't a natural one. Given the tendency of Macedonian ability to be assassinated, it is not too alien to say that Alexander may have been a target of an assassination plot, this time a successful one. The strongest claim against the poison theory is the fact that 12 days passed between the start of his illness and his death, and such long-lasting poisons were probably not available back then. His body was laid in a gold sarcophagus and was buried in Alexandria and not in Macedonia, because Ptolemy stole his sarcophagus and took it to Egypt. Although he had a son, Alexander IV, he was born after his death and at first the generals tried to cooperate and wait until Alexander's son would come out of age, but rivalry soon afflicted the Macedonians, which resulted in Alexander's son being murdered at the age of 13 and his empire being carved between his generals. What do you think about our pick? Did we say something wrong? If you want to learn even more about Alexander the Great, check out our friends at n60learning.com by clicking the link in the description. For more videos like this one, subscribe to Forum Feast and leave us a comment saying what you would like to see next. Until next time, goodbye.